you've always sought. I mean, it's very, it's very easy to tell people how things are or what to do, etc. But as uh, Red Auerbach, who is the coach for the Celtics, oh. he said, "It's not what you tell p the players; it's what they hear mm. that counts." Mm. And uh, it's funny what people hear. You could say something very clearly, and then what they hear, and you go, where did you get that? Oh, I, I, I get this all the time. That's one of the reasons why I moved to having frequent interviews with people. Because oh. I didn't, I wanted to find out what they were actually doing with the instructions that I gave them. Right. And I'll give you one example. There's a woman in Orange County, uh, and I gave her <coughs> instructions in a certain kind of meditation. And a couple of weeks later, at our next meeting, I said, how are you doing with this? And she described what she was doing. Oh, that doesn't make any sense at all. I said, so I said, what are you doing in the meditation? And so she told me what she was doing. And it was, she had taken one crucial point and twisted it. Mm. And she got something quite fruitful out of it, but it wasn't what I'd instructed her. Right. So I said, okay, that's fine, you got something fruitful, okay, but now I want you to go back and do it this right. way. Right. Two weeks later she came, and how oh, are you doing with this? And she described her experience, and again, it didn't sound right. I said, so what are you doing? She'd taken the same point and twisted it another way, uh -huh. and said, okay, that's fine, and you got something out of that too. <laughs> now let's, but what we're aiming for is this, and I gave her, explained what was going on. She said, oh yeah, I get it. She was a very intelligent woman, no problem. And it was only the third time that she actually started practicing it the way that the practice was intended. Now I don't see this as a particularly as a problem, because she needed to work through those stages. Mm -hmm. But, and as you say, it was just going in, and that's what she was hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's one of the reasons why I have, uh, I like to have meetings with students, because I want to know what's going on in them, rather than them, you know, meditating for six months on something. Right. And another student of mine was having a problem with her meditation, and I listened to her, and I could not figure out what the problem was. And I kept asking her questions, and I, I just couldn't figure it out. So I said, okay, I want I want you to pretend that I'm a new student. I want you to teach me this meditation. Mm. And so she taught it, and as she taught it, she left something out. I went, oh, that's it. And it was quite literally, she hadn't that's heard. That's brilliant, though, saying, teach me. It, it's neat to have someone teach somebody else to learn something, but to find out what they know, you know, what, what they're they know. understanding. Yeah. That was, that's great. And, and so they, and, and then it was very easy for me to identify what it was that she was leaving out. And I've had this experience myself many times. Sometimes people say something to me, and I can hear all the words, and it, they don't make any sense. And it's not because they aren't making sense. Mm -hmm. It's because something in me is arising, and it's just not letting me put those words together to make the sense that is actually there. You know, I can go back two or three years later, same words, oh, now it makes sense because something has shifted in me. So we have all of this stuff going on, this is all going on in the students, mm -hmm. so I have to be aware of it, because mm -hmm. otherwise... <laughs> well, and, and work with it on the fly. I mean, you can't say, excuse me, I have to have a moment to work with what I think is arising in me as you say, you know, you've got to kind of oh, when you're do teaching. it as you're, yeah, oh, you, it's a yeah. continuous fluidity.